What's going on guys, my name's Raph, and have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in the world of the Pokemon anime? Imagine what it would feel like taking on the amazing trainers, exploring the fascinating cities and natural areas, and of course, encounter the magical Pokemon. Well, I do. A lot. Like, seriously, a damn lot. For someone that's been a fan of the Pokemon anime since knee high, I've always wanted to know how my journey would unfold. I was recently tagged by a bunch of creators to participate in Crash's new Wants to Journeys tag. The tag outlines what our story would be if we were in the world of the Pokemon anime, with a series of rules and questions. These consist of which Pokemon we would have in our team, which region we'll hail from, what our profession would be including our goals, and who our rivals and companions would be on our journey. Seeing as many of you have asked me to do this before on Twitter, I thought why not better occasion to compile these answers in the form of this tag. Let's jump straight into it. Don't forget to leave this video a like to show your support, I'll be sure to bring out my next video shortly. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't ready to keep up to date, and without further ado, Let's begin. Before I dive into my team, I think it would be best to explain which region I'm from and my backstory. If it wasn't obvious enough, I would be a trainer that is from the Gala region, which is based on my home, the United Kingdom. I'm from London, me old flower. Come on, get us a cuppa, darling. Young nine-year-old Raph would be from the city of Winden, which fun fact is actually the city that is based off where I'm actually from. My journey all started thanks to watching the Kellos League finals on TV. Seeing the battle between Ash and Alan, I was heavily inspired, and I too dreamed of having a Mega Charizard X on my team one day, and becoming the best British trainer. As I turned 10 years old a week later, I head over to the town of Wedgehurst, where I'm greeted by the new professor of the region, Kuro Blitz. He has recently taken up the role all the way from Portugal, and is actually well known in this region for his research and theories on Pokemon. With my eyes set on Charmander as my starter, I get informed by Professor Kuro that this Charmander has a secret, and is very different compared to the regular. Kuro mentions to me that the flame on this Charmander's tail is larger than usual. According to its lore, this Charmander has been said to be the offspring of a legendary Charizard that has fought many fierce battles, and the trainer themselves gifted it to me as my starter Pokemon. Kuro then goes on to mention that in order to learn the secret of this Pokemon, myself and Charmander both have to connect our hearts together. I then go on to nickname my Charmander Fuego, which translates to the word fire in Spanish, and seeing as my name is Rafael, and my background is from Spain, it fits pair in pair. I set off my journey through Gala aiming to take on the gyms and defeat every Gigantamax Pokemon in my path. Keen to learn more about Fuego, he ends up being my only Pokemon at the time on my team. We take on every opponent in our way, come in victorious in every battle, and as time passes, Baby Charmander evolves all the way into a fierce Lizardon. Upon reaching the league, I take on Leon who too has his own Charizard, which is capable of Gigantamaxing. Due to its immense power and experience, I'm unable to defeat him. But I'm not disheartened by this, as Leon notices that my Charizard has a gift for battling, and states that one day, I will learn more about this. So after hearing these words, I decided to refresh myself, and head back to Professor Kuro explaining what I've learned. Kuro then mentions to me that I should visit the Kalos region. This is the region known for Mega Evolution, and a very famous researcher named Richie Farley may be able to help me learn more about Fuego. He tells me that my time has now come to learn the truth, so I'm keen to know more, and I set on over there. When I reach Kalos, I end up meeting Professor Richie, who is the region's professor that has studied the Charizard species for years, and this is where it gets deep. Richie analyzes Fuego's body temperature and power levels, and explained to me that this Charizard is emitting energy that is known to be one on the same level as a Mega Evolution. He then goes on to tell me that according to the biography of the Pokemon's data, it was once abandoned by its original trainer. The data states that after being hatched from an egg, the previous trainer was incredibly selfish, and would train Fuego quite harshly. He would attempt to force it to be like a Lance Charizard, despite it not being a Charizard at its time. This is where I learned that Fuego is a Pokemon capable of Mega Evolving, and is actually the child of a Lance Charizard. Richie then goes on to say that Fuego is unable to react to any Megastone that a Charizard can hold, and this is due to the fact that during its harsh backstory, it ended up swallowing a Megastone in fright of its original trainer. This is why the flame on Fuego's tail is larger than usual, as its power is said to be on par with Mega Evolution, despite not even being in a Mega Evolved state. Richie then goes on to say the same words as Kuro, stating that in order to learn the secret of this Pokemon, myself and Fuego have to both connect our hearts together, and informs me to visit the Tower of Mastery in the Kalos region, in which mine and Fuego's teamwork would then be tested. After I have left Richie, he then mentions the following. According to an old legend from Kalos, if there's a strong bond between Trainer and his Charizard, that itself can be used as a power. After reaching the Tower of Mastery, I'm greeted by a trainer who is hooded and has no face shown. I get immediately challenged to a battle by him and his Charizard. After numerous clashes, he Mega Evolves his Charizard into Mega Charizard X. Despite being unable to withstand the power, Fuego and I continue to persevere, to which after a clash of Blast Burns, the trainer's hood gets incinerated revealing their true identity, 
beaten Alain. Alain tells me that after winning the Kalos League, he set aside in the Tower of Mastery training new trainers and their Charizards how to undergo the Mega Evolution phenomenon. He was informed by Richie that I would be visiting, and as the trainer of his Charizard's child, he too wanted to test me to see if I was worthy of looking after Fuego. He mocks me and antagonises me stating that I'm not worthy, and after great frustration, I released the words saying that mine and Fuego's hearts will always be together. And then it happened. Fuego emitted insane energy, and then too Mega evolved into a Mega Charizard X. Alon was astonished by this as not only did I not have a Mega Ring with a Keystone, but the fact that I responded to Fuego's heart reminded him of a time that he took on a trainer with an insanely powerful Greninja, who too didn't require any form of a Mega Stone or Keystone to reach a new level of power. Fuego's flames became much larger than the usual. I end up losing to Alon, to which he thanks me for showing him the power I have, and advises me that I should travel the world with Fuego to master this new power, and form a team of Pokemon. This is how my story began. Taking this all into consideration, I set out a series of goals. My main goal would be to become the strongest British trainer taken on all of the regional gyms, trials and leagues, working my way up later to one day take on both Alan and Leon again, and hopefully defeat them. Another goal of course would be to complete the Pokedex, and form a team of loving Pokemon. And finally, I would aim to learn how to master the Mega Evolution mechanic with Fuego. Now let's talk about the Pokemon that I would have on my team. These would not only be Pokemon that I've caught during my travels, but also Pokemon that I can relate to on a personal level. Starting off, we have Fuego, who is capable of Mega Evolution. For the Charizard fanboy that I am, the Kanto Firestarter holds a special place in my heart. It was the first Pokemon I came across from playing the games, and during its time in the anime, my love for this Pokemon grew. It's my favourite Pokemon, hence why I chose it as my starter along my anime journey. The bond Fuego and I have is irreplaceable. My second team member would be a Grimmsnarl that I named after the one I used in my sword copy being Sneeko. This is the first Pokemon I caught back as an Impidimp once I was leaving Galar. Grimmsnarl is another favourite Pokemon of mine, and this is all due to its mischievous personality and amazing design. The Grimmsnarl I have is capable of Gigantamaxing. My third Pokemon would be a West Sea Gastrodon. The Pokemon would be nicknamed Sluggy. I first encountered Sluggy back as a Shallows in the Sinnoh region. With the Team Pokegraph Eat Slug slogan making its mark in the community, this too draws inspiration to its name. I never was a huge fan of Gastrodon, but ever since it turned into a new meme, it's now become one of my favourite Pokemon ever. Next up is a Metagross. This Pokemon was gifted to me by the champion of the Hoenn region, Steven Stone. Playing my Emerald copy made me fall in love with this Pokemon. I remember the countless hours I had to put in just to evolve the Beldum into its final stage, and the end result proved itself to be quite the reward. Just like Steven's, my Metagross would be shiny. Yam Mega is the Pokemon that would be taking up my fifth slot. This Pokemon is more of a personal choice rather than just a random encounter. I had a Yam Mega in my Diamond copy back in the early days, and despite its cool colour palette and overall design, this Pokemon reminded me of my youth. One summer holiday in Spain, I remember seeing a bunch of dragonflies at the local pools. I would attempt to try and catch one in my hand, and after failing numerous times, that didn't stop me from admiring this fascinating insect. I always loved insects from young, and dragonflies were my favourite amongst the bunch. And when Yamega came into the picture, that solidified my love for this Pokemon. My final team member would be a Lycanroc and its Dusk form. This is a Pokemon I encountered in Alola after taking on a very strong trainer. The trainer ended up gifting me a Rockruff egg, and one day, I was blessed to see it evolve into its own Dusk form. It's my favourite out of the Lycanroc trio. As for the three additional Pokemon, these would be Crocodile, Cloitza, and Toxtricity in its low key form. Crocodile would be a Pokemon I encountered back as a Crocroc in Yanova's Relic Castle, Cloitza would be a Pokemon I ended up fishing up in Kalos, and Toxtricity would be a Pokemon I caught back in Galar as a Toxel. Now let's talk about companions, and of course, if it wasn't obvious enough, it would be the Annie Poke Bros Ben and Zack. I first met Ben during my travels in Galar. He too was a British trainer from that region, who was aiming to become the best with his partner Emolga. With the same goal as mine, we started off as rivals, but then became strong bros working and travelling together. We then met Zack in the Kalos region. I first encountered Zack as I took him on in a battle against his strong Greninja. This Greninja seemed a little different than the usual. Like Ben, he too was a rival, which then became a very strong bro as well. There was also this one line I would say when taking on his Greninja. Goga? Oh, poor Sachi Kagoga, come back to me. I love you, I miss you, Kagoga. With companions out of the way, let's talk rivals. I would have quite a lot of friendly rivals from Galar. These are all trainers from the United Kingdom, such as Pokedan, Nao Kelly, Ozimitsu, and Zero Voltage. All of these trainers had different goals and aspirations. As for my main rivals, these would be Ash Ketchum, Alan and Leon. I first learned about Ash during the time I watched him during the Kalos League Finals. I discovered that he too was a legendary trainer that was aiming to become a Pokemon Master. So since day one, he was always someone I was aiming to beat. As for Alan, this is the person with the strongest Mega Charizard X in the entire world. He too was someone that I was hoping to defeat, 
and game victorious over. Finally, we have Leon, who is the strongest trailer in Galar. After losing Tim first time round, I hope on taking him on in a rematch one day with Fuego, showing him our new power. Besides the anime rivals, I would have also some rivals from the Anipo community. These would also be Ionic Bond, Tyra and the God 3, and Trayman 1. These would be trainers that I have all encountered in the Hoenn, Kellos, and Alola regions, all insanely powerful with great intelligence. So that was my Pokemon anime journey. To conclude this tag, I now have to tag 5 people to participate. The people I'll be tagging are Age of Trades, Charusharu, Ozimitsu, Pokedan, and Nile Kelly. I'm looking forward to seeing what great tags you guys come up with. Once again, thanks to the bros Trayman1, Infamous Trainer, and Oak Propaganda for tagging me, a massive shout out to Corey aka Crasher for coming up with this tag. I would highly urge you all to take part in this, and feel free to tag me so I can check them all out. If you need further information regarding this tag, then check out Corey's video where he explains it in its entirety. Why not let me know about your own adventures in the comment section down below. If you guys would like to interact with me, then be sure to follow me on Twitter and join the Team PokerF Discord server to discuss all things Pokemon. You can find the rest of my social networks on screen and the description below. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to leave it a like as your support is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. Finally, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date on my videos and click on the little bell to enable notifications so you guys get notified when I upload a new video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be sure to stick around for more Pokemon content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.